Mm, I know we'd worked on a little bit of positioning and boost usage and talked about um, uh, talked about using Matrix a bit. I know this time you had said you wanted to work a bit more on Matrix. Was that right? Yeah. Okay. So why don't we go ahead and just start off immediately like we did last time. Go ahead, just queue into a quick play game. And uh, I'm going to come in and spectate. And we'll get right back where we left off. Uh, in general, did you have any questions for me? Anything you'd thought of since last time? Or anything, you, is anything else specifically you're wondering about other than just uh, what you'd mentioned in the... Uh, coaching survey? Uh, no, not really. Okay. And then we can just continue working on uh, general techniques and gameplay and see what we can do. Welcome to Hollywood. With every death comes honor. With You're honor, redemption. This is my kind of city. Light, camera, action! Attack commences in 30 seconds. I can't wait to get into the fight! So, you can start talking already. With a comp like this, you have no tank to really hide behind. So you want to be extra aware of cover. Because you're not going to be able to just have a, a Reinhardt give you a shield or an Arisa give you a shield. So you'll want to be playing close to walls and places where you can duck away. Five, four, three, two, one. Attack commencing. Routing power to forward shield. There is someone behind you, to the right. Diva is very good at 1v1s with most heroes, especially a McCree. So, if you have opportunities like that, like you did, you can go and uh, follow him and take him out. Uh, you let him get away, but no, no hero in, in the game can really run away from you effectively. So you can go after people a little bit more aggressively and finish them off. Like right there, they're low. You can push in uh, as you're getting picks and get even more. Especially when you're you're still at full health, you can put pressure on. Like right now, it'd be a good time to fly in there further. Just go in and keep doing damage. There you go. Your team's gonna back you up. That's exactly what you need to do as a tank. Is you lead the charge in like that. Of course, when it makes sense to. So there is a good idea because you, your team had the advantage. You might as well get all the way with it. Right now, your team's still up. The enemy team is staggered. You can push forward. There you go. And maybe yeah, you get some damage on that mercy. Oh, behind. Yep. Good, good, good. That's it. Perfect. Yeah. Because you're so mobile, it's your responsibility to not just be aggressive and go forward, but if people are hurting your team behind, you need to go back and take care of that. Good work. Good call. Go after the thing that your tracer's after. If you're both focusing him, you have a much better chance of getting the kill. I've the enemy. 
Yep, someone's behind. That's the first priority. So there in particular, I might not have used my boost immediately because the Mercy had to fly past me anyways, right? You you could uh, pressure her and as soon as she flies away, then you, you follow her with your boost. It'd be easier to confirm the kill. Good. Yep. Well, you did the right thing. Sort of back up to try and see if you can help out with that. Oh. Would be, yeah. Good. 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 Good timing. Well done. You hear the junk rat? Where's he at? Nice. Okay, you can finish him. Go after him. There we go. Okay. Good work. Cool. Victory. So one thing uh, in that last sequence there, when you went after that junk rat, um, when you're chasing people down, it's very hard to continue to track and do damage. You know, continue hitting all of your your shots if you fly into them or past them. So you usually will want to fly up to them and stop before or just as you hit them. But if you keep flying after that then you're going to get all turned around and have a hard time following them, right? So we talked last time about being able to cancel your boost. Um, that'll make it a lot easier for you to keep people centered in front of you and not lose track. Does that make sense? So good, good boost cancellation technique um, using the boost key instead of uh, melee. I remember... I remember what you told me last time, and I decided to use that for um, what I did just now. Uh, what part of what you're saying? Oh, um, the boosting. Yes. You're doing a good job, then. Um, you know, going after targets like that. So that that's 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 great. Uh, last time I remember you were playing very safely uh, with your team. But being more aggressive and, and following up on kills, and then when you have the advantage, pressuring the team, uh, pressuring the enemy team further, um, so that your team can get more out of winning that fight is, uh, is 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 a big way to really throw a game in your favor. Um, all right. So I'll queue for one, and you just ask questions about anything you're not sure about, and I'll try and comment on uh, why I'm doing what I'm doing as we go. Um, the the thing I still have to comment on, um, you you paid a lot better attention throughout the the last half, but. Welcome to reality. You were leaving a lot of things Select behind uh, behind your team. Uh, for instance, the McCree in the very beginning. I was just waiting to, to see how long it would take you to notice, but he was there from the very beginning, right? The McCree and that Mercy. Luckily, he was really bad and he couldn't kill anyone, but he was there for a good 20 seconds while your team was starting to move out. And that ended up getting you guys really split up. So um, even if you don't hear anything as D.Va, I would recommend uh, being a little bit more um, active on looking around and checking for uh, things behind you. Not just to have a better awareness of where your team is, but also to make sure that you're not missing anything. I can't wait to get into the fight. Uh, why is my crosshair so different on this Let's shoot for account. a new high score. Five, four, three, two, one. All right. So this is going to be a little bit different because I have an actual shield to play around. So, But uh, most of the time I, I can play safely on my own just by using the, um, the side here. Now, uh, uh, we talked before about using your um, your uh, micro missiles effectively. So my team has pushed up a little bit. I'm going to come up a little bit, but not too far. So I stopped it before I got... Uh, Beyond the point of no return, so where I still had cover, I could back to. See, I'm playing uh, close enough that I can help out, but not so far forward that I'm going to be 
getting hooked. So if my Reaper's putting a lot of pressure on this guy, I'm gonna push up with him. I'm playing at this front line. My team's here right now, so this isn't actually that risky a play. I'm taking a lot of damage, so I'm gonna fly away now. So I'm when I wanna go somewhere, I'm canceling my boost as early as possible. As soon as I get to that spot so that it comes on cooldown faster. That means that uh, it'll be up sooner again that when I need it. I don't want to be that close to the hog, so I backed up. If I get hooked, that's really bad for my team. So I pushed, uh, got myself out. And I'm doing damage while trying to break line of sight. You see I'm hiding kind of below this bridge, knowing that he's not going to come. I'll try and eat abilities that could cause me problems. Okay, we'll just try and get lucky here. To force them to make a good play. Okay, the Reaper went in for real. That's fine. Not much of a problem to get hooked when he's the only one there. The big problem is when the team is all, uh, also there. So no one can hide. you can play you can play a lot more aggressively when you know what the limits are. Like I don't want to get so close to the Ryan that he can hit me. I'm giving myself plenty of time to react to things. I'm trying to be aware of the the echo. I'm doing a lot of walking around here, and then when I when I see someone low, I pounce on them using my boost. So this is a little too close, but he doesn't have a hook. But again, I'm backing up to use uh, cover now. And I know the hog's coming over to the side. He's looking for a hook opportunity. You don't you don't want to be the one to get hooked. Oh, that, yeah, I got stuck on a corner. So Matrix, I'm going to fly out and try and make sure that I'm up to support my team here. That's, yeah, I was a little too far away there. I backed a little too far out. Um, and that's because I got too low in the previous engagement. I don't want to be there for a May. I'm not going to do anything. We've taken a couple too many casualties, so we're just going to wait till the team gets in. Uh, so I'm not giving them more ult charts than necessary. So even if you're far away, continuing to shoot will still do damage. It's still very useful. So I'm going to help my team start to push in. Just throw my ult. Even if I don't get a kill with that, my team now has, uh, well, we, we kind of split them up. Oh, that's bad. That was a little too, uh, too far in without my team. So I'm out of mech now. I'm just backing up, playing as far away as I can while getting in shots and able to build up my uh, uh, build up my mech again. I'll be here with my other tank now. It's the safest, most effective place to be. My Reaper's in. I want to prevent him from getting slapped or you know stunned or something. So just get in there and uh, give him Matrix. Let him do the damage. So like, what would you, what would you be doing in like the case of a nano um, person? Like, oh, so on the enemy team? Yeah. Okay, so it depends on who that person is. So they have an Ana. Hopefully, we'll see a Nana boost come out on something, uh, or not, because our our Lucio just went and killed the enemy Ana, um, and now they're rage quitting. So, uh, what I would do is try and put as much pressure on them as I can myself, um, even if that meant losing my mech. Now, ideally, you're not, you don't want to lose your mech, but you're the one who can soak a lot of damage, and potentially, even if you lose your mech, you're not... Oops, I wasn't able to eat that. That's a shame. I'm not going to commit my ult here, in case we do need to recontest. Um, so, w when someone gets nanoed, let's say they have a, a soldier gets nanoed, or an enemy reaper gets nanoed, let's say their hog gets nanoed, if it's something that you can you know, slow down by using your matrix. Obviously, that's those are the times you really want to have um, your matrix. So, um, you just kind of get in there, and like, uh, be, one, one of the common examples would be um, um, a soldier, right? Uh, he's got visor, um, and, and, and he's nanoed. I get in his, oh, yep, no. Nope. Can't, can't matrix that. I'm gonna back up. Hopefully, I can get a little bit of healing without just not losing my mech. Nope, there's no I'm gonna swap there. <laughs> okay, never mind. I guess I do survive that. 
But uh, we're not probably going to be able to push off this. Wow, this Widow is just hitting hitting shots. Okay, I got mech. Um, yeah, so I'm going to get... It. I would get up in his face. Like... It's the same kind of thing I would do if, like, the Hog got nanoed and he's using his ult. I, I'm going to get in there, use as much Matrix as I can, and make him focus me instead of the rest of my team. While he's distracted on me, hopefully the rest of my team survives. Here, I'm going to commit my ult here. Force them to play around it. My team should be able to move in. And we can... The Ryan is out of position, so I can go after him. Oh, I ate the, uh, the May ult there. Just reacting when you hear things. And if I'm gonna get frozen, I try to maybe dodge the freeze by making myself hard to hit in the, in the air. That should be it, okay. Or um, at the very least, even if I get frozen when I'm flying around like that, um, it's less likely that they will follow up with damage because I'm still moving. Uh, the worst thing is when you get frozen, you're just stuck there. So always, and, and same kind of thing applies, like even if you're just taking a lot of damage, you can start flying around to dodge that damage and hopefully get to safety or give your healers a little bit extra time to uh, uh, to heal you up. All right, why don't you go ahead, queue up for one. And really what you need to, the, the, the biggest thing um, in that last game, and we'll, we'll see how you're doing in this uh, next one. Uh, the biggest thing I noticed though that sticks in my mind was just uh, in the beginning, not paying attention to your surroundings. Um, yeah. So try, trying to be more aware I, I feel like you have a good sense for when, you know, when you should go in or shouldn't. Uh, you're still a little bit on the uh, the safe side, which is great because it, it's much harder to make someone play safer than it is to make someone play aggressive. So you, you, your, your thinking is, is important. And a lot of people just aren't thinking. So... We, you should just be constantly looking for opportunities. And I'll, I'll try and highlight them for you as you're playing. Like, what are the big opportunities? And I'll, I'll tell you when you've missed opportunities, too. Like, um, a Reinhardt fire strike that slips past. Um, it's second nature to me to, you know, if a fire strike's coming, even if it doesn't look like it's going to hit someone, I will flick over and try to matrix it anyways so it doesn't accidentally hit and uh, take someone out. Same thing with other abilities and, and little bits of uh, stray damage. I'd be flying forward there to try and be at the front as much as you can. Because you can always back up to your team, but it's a lot harder to catch up if they're ahead of you. Okay, and so keeping an eye on... Yep, so you're, you're fine here. I, I, I wouldn't play uh, near the edge where the hog can hook you. You're, or where you could get booped. There you go. So maybe flying in there. Yeah, that's good. Go after. Okay. I, I see what you're doing there with the canceling the boost. I think you can go a little bit further there. Make, make sure you're actually getting to your target. It's more like like right now, boost. If you want to boost up to that door, like right to where the cover would be, there you go. Like that's perfect. That's exactly what I would be doing to make sure that it comes off cooldown. Now you have it up. You could fly away if that maze pressuring you. Yeah. Getting comfortable with that will make a big difference. There you go. And getting your micro missiles in there too. You would have confirmed that kill a little bit faster. Yep. Fly away. You don't want to take that one v one. Oh. Also, if you. Uh, you need to be able to throw Matrix in there. You had it available. That would have potentially been a a, a missed um, missed save. There you go. There you go. Good good use of the missiles. I like it. Chasing down the target. Okay. You don't want to take that now. You fly out of that as soon as you can. That's too many people. Yep. Okay. 
That was a little bit of a miss running away to where the May was. That if your ball wasn't there, that would have been unfortunate. Okay. Cool. Now, so far, you're in all the right places. Now there, you definitely you want to get out of it. You don't want to take a 2v1. Oh, you, now you can go back in because you've been nanoed. There you go. Just do, do as much damage as you can. Nice. Yeah, good job. Good job. Nice. Yeah, good idea to go after the Zarya who's in your back line. You, you can't leave her there. Because, yep. You gotta you know, finish her off here. Oh, God. All right. Yep. Yeah, if you're if you're not effective or you're having trouble taking the one v one, then yeah, just regroup with your team and at least make sure that they're not going to get a, a pick on your team. So you had the right idea at the end. Score one to zero. Yeah, there's so many little things that you have to to keep track of with with Diva. You know, you had to. You've got three different cooldowns that all matter. Yeah. Um, honestly, compared to like other heroes like Reinhardt or Zarya, you, you only have maybe two cooldowns to work with. But you got to worry about having your matrix managed. You got to worry about when your micro missiles are off, and then also your boost. So getting getting that all to be second nature, where you just know what's up and what's not. Even if you have to look at it now to be able to plan what you're doing better, you don't be afraid to be looking at the cooldowns to to really know before you go into a fight. Yes, I can do my micro missiles. I can um, have all of my matrix available. Yeah, probably don't want to be taking that fight. So as soon as you have boost, there you go. Good. You back yourself out a little bit. Maybe you don't go out that far. Uh, you don't need to take yourself so far out of the, the fight. I, I, yeah, you don't want to be making that aggressive push when you were less than half health. So that that was a big mistake. You 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 push towards the enemy team. Uh, not only was your team not entirely with you, but you were already low. So the correct call would have been to back out. Um, or at least try and play from the other side of the point where you might have been able to stall it a little bit longer. Yep, number one goal now, just get back to where your team is fighting. Try and get in there with your, your other tank or protect whoever might be taking damage. Okay, I would be looking to see what your ball is trying to do. Yep, and now he's gone in. He, he had just gone straight through. Now you can follow up on uh, whatever's going on in there. Yep. Getting your missiles involved. Good. Good kill. And now you can put the pressure on. She's the last one you need to worry about. There you go. Pressure. Hey. Good. So, when you're going into a fight, uh, I mentioned at the beginning there to keep an eye on what your ball was doing because he was going around left side to make a play. You can either go with him or just go in from your side at the same time and you'll have a much bigger impact than going in later. So keeping an eye on what your team is doing. Um, like, where's your ball right now? Where's he going? Just taking a quick look. He's he's way in their back line now. Good idea to back out a little bit there. That's all you need to do. Now he's going in. Oh, good matrix, good matrix. That's perfect. That's exactly what you need. Wow, your junk rat just got a huge kill. Oh. You should have you, you should have stayed right there. That hog just got a hook on your uh, on your team. Uh, that hog was the last guy. You you could put a little bit of pressure. Your ball's doing it now. He's you can go after him. Get in there a little bit more. Okay. Yeah. Maybe play at a corner though in case he he pushes. Yep. There you go. Okay. Now now you're back. It's a little too late now. If you were there with your ball. 
So figure out where your team is. Just fly out of that if you can. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, so your your brig was uh, frozen in there. You could have flown or walked closer and um, been able to matrix her. Uh, here, you you just want to die to reset. There's, uh, staying alive longer is just gonna make it harder to group up again. I was thinking about talk about using the ult, but I yeah, good idea not to. Yeah, I was gonna say um, y you want to use it when it'll have a big impact. And right there, your team was already out, and they've already capped the point. So you're not gonna retake the point there without a full regroup. Oh, Matrix. You, you missed the, the the rockets and then the fire strike. Your ball's in. I would have been flying in there with him as he's going to do damage. Okay. Okay, when you're nano, do you want to just be holding left click? You want to be doing as much damage as you can. Okay, so at that point, that's that's the last chance to do anything. You should have had, you should have just used your ult anyways. Uh, keeping an eye out. Uh, like, again, there's so many things to keep track of. Um, but, uh, yeah, that, that's that's the only thing that seems to be slowing you down right now. Which, honestly, the, so I'm gonna assume this is your only account. Yeah, it is. Okay, so so you have um, maybe a hundred hours in Overwatch. I'm, I'm not too sure, but you're, you're basically judging by your level. Um, there's still a lot of room to grow just experience wise. Like it, you will get better naturally just by becoming more comfortable with all the little bits of information the game is throwing at you. So, so there's a lot to be gained just from that. Okay. Yep. Keep doing damage as, as best you can, and matrix when you need to back out rather than just all the time. Just keep keep doing damage, keep doing damage, just keep doing damage. Just keep up that pressure. Right, just keep, uh, you're, you're taking a lot of damage on Matrix and back up. Perfect. Okay, good. Now, as soon as you healed up, do the same thing. Just maximum pressure. Okay, good. You're playing from a safe distance. Now, not not time to go in. Back out, back out, back out, back out. Yeah. So you're getting low and you're running out of Matrix. That's fine. It's better to die there and, and just reset. So when... Your ball absolutely shouldn't be <laughs> in there still fighting on his own. Um, anyways, you, you, you played it perfectly um, in the beginning. You just get in there, your team fly up and help fight. So your your micro missiles don't have a range fall off, so they, they will do damage from further away. You can use them as you're getting in close. You know, put extra pressure onto a Ryan shield or get some splash damage. Just keep keep up the damage. Yeah. Now back. Yep. Yeah. Uh, okay, you're getting healed. You can probably stay in there now. Okay. Matrix is back up. So you, as soon as you're you're not getting healed, you're you're low like that. You should be matrixing to back up. There's no reason to stop shooting. You just always be shooting. If there's even a chance you could get a shot on someone, every little bit of damage will help you get back to your mech and uh, back to being effective. Yeah, he's getting towards uh, like this is this is it. You gotta go in. Time to my 
You gotta be on the point. And this is just if you lose your mech, you gotta use your ult here. Okay, when they when when you lose your mech, you're gonna Okay, use it. There you go. And just keep shooting, keep shooting, keep shooting. There you go, stay on the point, stay on the point. This is it. Pick something and just be shooting at it. Just keep shooting, keep shooting. When you had a mech, just keep shooting, keep shooting, keep shooting. Just keep keep going. There you go. Don't stop shooting. Okay. All right. That that was basically the most you could possibly do given the situation at the end there. So. <clears throat> All right. So I think I think we learned a, a very important uh, technique there and something that I want you to focus on. But then we we had to try to bring it together with the aggressiveness that um that you're missing so um being able to play safely like you were there to back up when you're taking damage is very important but also if you only do that and you try and do that perfectly you will not be able to do damage effectively so uh back out of this one i'm gonna queue up for one and i'll show you what i mean by trying so um I've used a bunch of different ways to describe how you should be positioned relative to your team. Um, so I'll tell you both ways of thinking about it. The first way is you should always be at the front two thirds of the team. So you got six people on the team, right? You should be a part of the f the first, the, the two people at the front, but you shouldn't be the person at the front all the time. You should most of the time be the second furthest forward person. So okay. whatever the other tank is, you want to make sure you can see them. And if you're ever going beyond them, it's only for a short period of time. D.Va doesn't have the power to just sort of sit at the front, right? That's what Reinhardt yeah. and other tanks, that's what even even Hammond, uh, Wrecking Ball, that's what he's he can do. He has the ability to do that and is slippery and can survive up there. D.Va can't. Winston can do that. <clears throat> Reinhardt, Orissa, all, all, those, all those sort of tanks can do it. Um, Diva and Zarya aren't that kind. They can they can survive at the front for a, a very short period of time. Um, so that's one way to think about it. That's just it's sort of the, the ideal way, but um, the ideal positioning. Now, the the more in depth way of thinking about it to understand it is you want to be as far forward as you possibly can. To do the because you're you're a short range damage right like all your damage is short range so i'm gonna get as far into their face as i can safely i had bubble and i have matrix there so i'm not gonna take a lot of damage i'm gonna be as close as i can here holding left click and not losing my mech that's like okay i'm taking a lot of damage i back up a little bit and continue doing damage here i'm, I'm riding the edge of how much uh damage i can take without losing my mech if i lose my mech i'm throwing so i don't want to take damage i'm using cover and I'm doing as much damage, getting as close to stuff as I can here. So I need to get in here and support my Zarya. Okay, I'm taking a lot of damage, but I'm also getting healed and we're pushing. And I, I mean, I, I'll see opportunities that you aren't seeing based on my skill level because I know I can go in and out aim, out skill someone. So I'm gonna, even if I'm taking damage, I'm gonna get as far in as close as I can. And I see, okay, their team's there. I'm taking too much damage. I'm backing up now. I'm just holding, holding, I still my team's here. So my team's here, now I can push again. Oh, got slept. That's a miss on me. I see the Zen shooting his, uh, his right click there. So I, they matrix that. I'm gonna let myself take some damage. And use my matrix to uh, respond to damage uh, and and all the fact that I wasn't getting enough heals there. So I'm trying to keep matrix up for big ults because I know they can have ults now. Also, when I'm taking way too much damage, my team's not healing me enough. I think our Moira's probably out of juice. We got our orb, so I can push a little bit harder again. I'm trying to get as close as I can. I got my ult too. This is a decent spot because they're kind of split up. So we just throw it in, and see what happens. Doomfist behind. I don't want to leave him here. So I'm trying to pay attention to everything on all sides. So I'm going to spend as much time as I can helping push the cart. We have at least three, so I can leave him there. 
Just don't always trust them to keep three. And then I'm gonna push up and try and have an off angle to whoever's gonna come through. Force them to look at me. Putting in damage here. I'm gonna get closer now. I know where they're coming from. Get as close in as I can. So just paying attention to um, uh, ultimates there. It's a shame I went down. I at least blocked the the McCree ult, but I was in a yeah, in a bad spot. And the um, yeah, the, I blocked the high noon, but I, I wasn't able to kill the Reinhardt in time because they invested uh, Nana boost on him. So I'm right now. I'm deciding if I should even be going in. And at most, I'm gonna come as close as I can without sacrificing myself to make my make sure my team gets out. So that is safe enough for me, and I'm, I'm trying to make sure there's no one flanking on us. There's, yep, see there's someone up top there. There's a Junker right here. Might be able to get this. Nope, he's being su supported. So I immediately just throw up my Matrix and say, nope, I'm out. I uh, don't want to deal with that. My Zarya, though, is trying to get a little aggressive. Got to watch out for those traps. So just doing damage, pressuring their shield a bit. There's another trap up there, it looks like. No fire strikes for my team. Even just doing this is still helping my team because the Reinhardt will have less shield available when the when the time comes. Okay. Well, that is assuming my team doesn't just get themselves killed. I'm really hoping they would push uh, with me rather than to the side. So that, that's a bad play then on my part. If they didn't come with me and I wasn't paying attention to where they were, that's my mistake. We're going to back out. I'm not going to use my own until my team's ready to capitalize on it. And I'm... Uh, that's unfortunate. Uh, so I was playing that 100% right. It's my team that's not playing it right. When, like, I, I'm not feeding right there. My team is feeding by not having recognized how far forward they can be safely. So I knew I had to be running away a lot sooner. Um, I need to get out completely. Try and get as much healing as I can. I'll be back with the team. I'm gonna. I should be going after this junk rat. I'm gonna do that in a second here, so my team doesn't have to worry about him. Oh well, he didn't get me. That's good. They had a nade coming in. I could hear it, so I used my uh, matrix, even though I couldn't see anything. That's unfortunate for. Uh, for me, couldn't get any kills because they're all dead already. That's fine. I'm always checking around to make sure no one's getting around this. Even just damaging the shield here. Just If they don't have a shield, their tanks are so much less effective. They can't do as much damage at range. I see people getting low, so I'm going to push in. Okay, a little, little too much damage on me. Yeah, that's a shame. We just died to reset. I thought we had an opportunity to push a little bit harder. Not always the case. Okay, so now we've got a, a hog on our team. So, this is all about recognizing how much you can get away with. So I'm gonna, I can get way up in here and keep pushing forward because I know I can get out. I see what heroes they have in, in a given space. I know what my health is. You see, I, I was still pushing even though I was under half health because I knew that I could get out of that. And I know I have Matrix. And now now we're in a bad spot. We, are, we, we have a couple people down. There's nothing I can do. This is actually just the safest way out so they can't shoot at me while I'm retreating. I'll come out together with my team. Try and play with my hog. We really shouldn't be doing anything because we're just feeding them all. Unless we can make a, a push together. Where is my team and why are they dying? Oh, look at this Reinhardt getting getting aggressive. Yeah, we just need to reset. They they played it a little too well. I'm not actually gonna go into spawn so my Zen can still get some heals. Let's 
we go. Uh, we gotta come up here and deal with this junk rat again. Oh wow, there's Zen came out here. So I stop before I get too far in. Oh, that's uh that's a bad place to be right there. Okay, I'm gonna use that because I want to keep my mech. And it's still gonna break a shield at least. Okay. No, that was only to to really help me keep my mech. Gonna be shooting constantly and playing as far away as I can while still having an angle to shoot at. So. Always moving too, you notice I'm not I'm not stopping. Get right back into my effective range now. So I'm just majoring a lot there too because um, that blocks off Anna's heals. Oh, I took a lot of damage. Oh, that's really good for us. That's unfortunate for me. No, I, I couldn't get the shots on him. Theoretically, I could have killed that uh, McCree before he got the ult off, but I missed. No, nah, the hack had worn off from the uh, the MP. This is really tough because theoretically, Diva and Hog have the least synergy as tanks. You're both sort of solo damage dealing capable, but neither one of you can really help your team. Um, like, just sort of sit in a spot. You got to be really aggressive. So it works, but you got to play very co uh, in a very coordinated way. So we're gonna have to make a big play if we're gonna get through this. That's really not good. What ults do we have? I should not have used the ult there. Uh, oh, we're, we're committing everything. Well, we did get a couple picks actually. No, this is working out. We opened up an opportunity. That's, that's big. Our, our uh, Mercury got a lot of good shots. Oh, that's that's bad. I I screwed up. I shouldn't have let uh, the Anna sleep me. You know, just flying up on top of the payload, trying to make myself as hard hit as possible for as long as possible. That's unfortunate. Yeah, there were a few, a few missed opportunities for myself, but um, overall, that game was made a lot a lot harder by the team comp. So the biggest thing I could have done was probably get into voice and try to coordinate and communicate with my team. Maybe um, ask politely for people to swap. Or at least uh, try to coordinate when we use ults. Huh, wow. All right, go ahead and queue up. So, do you understand better what I mean by playing as aggressively as you can, or play, playing as, as close to the enemy team as you can without dying, especially on that first point take? That, that was probably the best example of it because I'm playing with angles and I'm not letting them get behind me. Um, and rather than having a shield like a Reinhardt, I w like having a Reinhardt with my team, I was just using walls and cover to be able to get as close as I could. And then if I did take damage, I flew back to my team, that matrix, and fly away um, so that I'm not losing um, so my mech. Diva, so I don't know which one I should... Oh, uh, just uh, leave the game. We can Traveling wait for a, a better one. Yeah, just leave it and queue for another.
say more. <laughs> okay, leave it and then wait a few moments. Yeah. Do you have any questions or thoughts watching uh, that game? Um, no, not really. It's actually kind of like making sense. Like, I'm... cool. Yeah. A certain amount of the stuff I'm talking about is is, is stuff you will be more naturally aware of just by playing more so what i'm really hoping to do here and telling you all those things because it's, it's a lot of information is just sort of accelerate the natural learning process like from from playing it yourself helping you to um tune into the important things and the the way of thinking that'll help you improve on your own uh tune into that a little bit more quickly You can probably go ahead and, and try and queue now. This doesn't have to do with the gameplay, but like, what if there is like possibly like in Bastion on the enemy team? Okay, um, so Bastion requires uh, a certain amount of coordination yeah, from your team, but with even one other person working with you, it's very very easy to deal with. So um, all you need to do, and, and even even without the coordination, if you're paying attention to what your team is doing. Um, you want to give your team a full two seconds where the there Bastion no can't do anything to them. The so that's uh, that's by using game. Defense Matrix. So game face on. ideally, wherever the Bastion is going to have the, the the biggest chance to deal damage to your team as you're exactly. as you're going in on them. Okay, let me. Uh, I'll make Let's it simple. We'll talk about the I the ideal way you deal with them is by having your whole team. Um, jump on him or focus all their damage on him and in that two seconds where you've had Matrix then to protect your team um, he should be dead alright so and I, I, I can show you an example or uh, explain a little bit more after this So here, just maximum damage, maximum damage. Always just holding down left click. You're taking damage, now time to, yep, there you go. Maybe not that far out, maybe to the, just the side there near that statue would have been good enough. Just all the damage, there you go, there you go. Keep, keep throwing damage. Keep throwing damage. JMT, thank you so much. Okay. Who's the next target? Are you, as soon as you get your boots, you're flying to make it happen. Who, who are you gonna get? There you go. Okay. Nice. Okay. You you spend a lot of time looking at the ground. Um, is there something else we can talk about later? A big. Uh, a big topic in first-person shooter games is crosshair placement. It's basically putting your crosshair where you're most likely to be able to do something with it already. Like, um, where you're most likely to see an enemy. And generally, the ground is not a very likely place for an enemy to be, if that makes sense. So, like, looking at around head or body height where uh, the, the enemy might be through a doorway, for instance. There you go, yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, just keep shooting, keep shooting. Playing with the cover. There you go, keep shooting, keep shooting. Just keep going. You may push a little bit further there because you're still safe here. They have nothing that's going to hurt you from this far away. Keep going now. You hear behind you. And keep moving. You don't, you don't go back and chase that when you're out of mech. You just have to turn around and try and keep it from killing you. But, uh, yeah, here, just... 
Now, now you may back out a little bit. There you go. Just keep shooting though. Doesn't matter what. Just keep shooting. Nice. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> that happens. Um, okay, your team got it. Sweet. Victory. We'll get into another one. That wasn't. Uh, that wasn't too much there. Play of the game. <laughs> All right, so when you're talking about a Bastion, um, ideally, so I, there are ways that I would definitely take care of it or recommend taking care of it if you've got a coordinated team, but obviously you don't always get that. So let's think worst case, you have no one on your team who's willing to talk or do anything to help you and you got to do it on your own. How are you going to take care of the Bastion? Um, at the rank you're playing at, so in gold and under, you can take care of that on your own in one of two ways. You can either very precisely throw your ultimate and land it on him. So um, I, when I first started playing Overwatch, I spent many, many hours in the practice range. Uh, this was before there were custom games where you could, you know, uh, just set it so you always had your ultimate i had to literally shoot at practice bots until i built my ultimate every time and then i would practice throwing the ult so that it would land on one of the bots heads um so being able to land it exactly where you want a lot of the time bastions if they're set up in their turret form aren't gonna be able to get up and then move to cover in time and if you land it directly on them even if there's a shield it's not gonna um, it's not gonna protect them so that's one way. The other way, in a in a desperation move, if you fly, you just fly at him using your matrix to keep yourself alive as long as possible. You're flying at him um, using your micro missiles as you're flying at him with matrix, so you're getting some damage in. Then you get in close and do as much damage as you possibly can, left clicking at him before he kill, kills your mech, because you will lose mech in, in this technique. Um, and after you've done all that and you're out of mech now, and theoretically you're right on top of him, um do you want to you want to see what this is like in a custom game if you're dan you're jumping and moving all around out of mech you're a small very hard hit target and when you're up that close you moving left to right means he has to move his camera a whole lot in order to be able to aim at you um so you can actually get a lot of damage into a bastion that way uh that that becomes a lot less effective at high ranks but um, you know, let's do this real quick for the purpose of demonstration. I'm going to make a little custom game. I'm going to put this on what's a good Wait, can I just throw this on skirmish? That's all we need. Skirmish, 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 skirmish. Where are all my Huh. I have... No, oh, I don't have any saved presets on this uh, account. Oops. Here, skirmish, and I'm going to invite you real quick. So here, you, you start as Bastion, and I'll, I'll play as D.Va. And then we'll, we can swap if you want. So just... Just go out and set up somewhere, and you'll see me coming, and you just try and keep me from getting to you. So I'm using my matrix, I'm gonna fly in, I'm using micro missiles, I'm dropping all around, so I couldn't kill you there, but now I can make myself very hard to see and very hard to hit by jumping on top of you and jumping all around. You see what I mean? Okay. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. obviously it's a lot more difficult when um, the enemy team's healing them and they got, you know, uh, tanks and all. So <clears throat> I would really recommend that technique more for um, <clears throat> if the Bastion is set up on his own. Um, and then otherwise, like most things in in Overwatch, like I I can tell you the best way to do it in a one v one, 
but you really shouldn't ever be taking 1v1s, or it, it should never be a, just a... Because if you see someone who's, you know, a full health enemy target, <clears throat> that could always change unless you're absolutely sure that it won't. I, I, that, that explanation doesn't really help. Um, you, like, you always want to take, you always want to take engagements. You always want to take fights where you know you're going to win or you're as confident as possible. So that's going to change depending on who's still alive on the enemy team or who's playing close to the Bastion or if he's already low health. Maybe if he's already low health, you just go at him anyways. Even if the whole team is stacked up, you just fly in there and, and try and do more. And you can hope then that your team sees that you're making that big push and will uh, take advantage of it. So... Um... All right. Let's let's go let's go and get you one more quick play game. Does that is that is that enough or is it for uh how to deal with Bastion? Yeah, it actually explains there, a lot. There's there's other uh so so what I was going to say and go ahead and just queue up. Um So I I can tell you how to do it on your own if you have to, but Overwatch is a team-based game. You're not really supposed to do things on your own. The answer, the correct answer to this is you dive him as a team. That's the same way the correct answer to how do you fight a Reaper is you don't, you fight him with your team. How do you fight a May? You don't, you fight him with your team. So, I mean, you can win 1v1s and there, like, there are ways to deal with them solo, but you're better off not trying to take those engagements alone. But uh, that's definitely something that um, we could go over uh, tips for how to deal with those individually difficult matchups. Because it, it's not, it isn't easy. It isn't easy. And when, when those opportunities do come up, being, if you know what to do, you can make a big difference by being able to win that engagement um, when normally, it, um, normally you wouldn't. I'm waiting a minute because the last game I joined, um... Got it, that's fine. I'm gonna try and keep it now. Sure. Welcome to Junkhead. There we go. Attackers incoming in 30 seconds. Alright, so this is a great place to practice 
being as far forward as you can without losing your mech, but without taking too much damage. So you want to play, you can play right next to your, uh, your Zarya. Yeah, getting, so here, you got a little bit of cover, but you, you want to make sure you'll be able to back behind up. Uh, so you're too far, yep. Reacted a little bit slow there. Um, a little too far forward, I would say, from the beginning. Not that you reacted that slowly, really. Uh, you just were too far in. And here, too, I would be backing up. You're too close, way too close. Even back out further. You can still shoot them from further away there. You have a much longer angle. You keep backing up, keep backing up. See, you still have this angle here. Keep shooting. Okay. There you go. So try and get in with your Zarya helper out, or there's that. There's a target. I like it. You get her? Nice. Who's next? You're, okay, a little too close. I'd back out. Yep. Perfect. I like it. Still play with that cover. Play with that cover. You're still too low to be pushing in. You're still under half health. Oh, you're Zenyatta? You gonna help him out? Okay, he made it. Good, yeah, here we wait for your team to regroup. Okay, you gotta go in now. Touch the cart, touch the cart, touch the cart. There you go. You just want to at least here stall the cart as long as you can by being be a nuisance on the cart. Okay. The payload has reached the checkpoint. Get going. You should be flying in to try and get back to your team as fast as you can every time you spawn. Alright, you saw that Pharaoh, right? There you go. Nice. <laughs> See, being able to pay attention to these people who are out of position, they're easy targets for a diva. Yep, I can be a little bit closer even keep doing damage. Just keep shooting, keep shooting, keep shooting. You have plenty of health. Okay. Okay, you're taking a little bit of damage. There you go, backing up. Good, good, good. Uh, try throwing your ult onto the cart. Uh, oh, oh, that's unfortunate. That's really unfortunate. <laughs> horrible timing for that, I'm sorry. So, one of the things you'll want to eventually practice is, it, like I said before, um, being able to throw something so it lands exactly where you want. It's not easy. Um, but it gives you so much power to really pick and choose exactly where they won't be able to run away from it. And, oh, that was great. Nice. Nice. You ate the sleep dart too, so you're able to get out of that now. So you can go in there and stall it out for your team. Oh, you should have, yeah. You, so when you're going in like that, straight into them, you should use your matrix, at least try to survive a little bit longer. This is good though, it's giving your team a lot of time. A lot of time to work on it. Good stuff. You just gotta just keep dancing around until you're sure you can call your mech. Oh, oh your team didn't quite get to you. You might have been able to get away with it a little bit earlier, but uh, I, I can't really fault your, uh, your decision not to. It's really risky. So where's the furthest person forward? You got your Zarya there. Uh, she, yeah, you can, this is as far as you want to go. Yep, 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 no, too. So even that was a little bit too far because it was only you and your Zarya. So if your Zarya is going to be um, that unsavable, um, you don't necessarily need to die with her if you if you realize that it's a bad situation basically the whole enemy team is there and it's just your Zarya and you you can leave her to die that's kind of her own problem um, ideally you'd be calling and uh, uh, trying to explain that in voice but 
go. This is all right. Yep, get the, get the Sparrow. Nice. Oh, no. Yep. Just keep shooting. You want to you wanna survive on the cart as long as you can. It really is baby thief on my Oh, here we go. Probably just call immediately. Okay. And then... Break that and leave your ult on the point. Like, there you go. Perfect. Oh no, they had invincibility field. It still worked though, it still worked. Good work. That's one of the best ways to use it. Oh, behind you, Anna. Over on the left, on the left, on the left. Yeah, just leaving it on the point. And so all we did there was try to time it around the uh, the Orisa shield. So we see her use it. Perfect. Next, break it, and then put it down. The next thing, if we really wanted it to be big, we, we could pay attention to the fact that they have the Baptiste and he has his invincibility field. So you're not looking above. They're, they could have people coming over the top, like a fair or Widow. You got to keep an eye on these things. Oh, don't. The Widow is very low. The... Nice. Again, you just need to stay by the cart here. Be, no, 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 no. Not, now is not the time to be aggressive. You're very low. Now you can go in. They're low. Oh. So I would shoot at the Widow. Your range damage. There you go. Try it. Get some free shots in on her. Don't don't push away from the cart though. Cart cart is uh, your only cover. You can play from behind the cart as much as you can there. All right. Uh, there there was a lot wrong with your team just not being very good, but um, little. There's still little optimizations that you, you could make. Um, the biggest one, so I mentioned before, the uh, crosshair placement. Um, that'll be the last thing we talk about tonight. But one of the reasons I think you're struggling so much with your awareness is just where you're looking as you walk around the map. So, um, real quick, can you spectate me if I go into the practice range? Is that a thing? I think. So. Here, let's let's try that. No, I can't speak. To That's me. unfortunate. I'm gonna go make My a custom business? game real quick then. My. That'll be super easy. Uh, here you can just spectate this custom game. Now entering the temple of Anubis. I can't spectate that either. Oh really? Win. Yeah. Uh, let me let me invite you as a spectator. There you go. Okay. Are you able to spectate me? Yeah. All right. So what I mean by crosshair placement is a lot of the time you're looking down here, or looking at the ground. You want to be looking where there could be an enemy. Like there could be an enemy over here, or through this doorway. Or there could be someone up here. I don't want to be looking at things where there's absolutely nothing that, that could be there. So I'm looking up here or usually just at least straight ahead. So I'm looking where there could, like if there's someone around the corner, they're going to be here. I don't want to be looking at the ground. I want to be looking ideally, you know, head or chest height. So I'm getting my maximum damage. So as I'm like flying around and like looking around, I'm looking at this sort of level height. And I'm, and I'm basically keeping my head up so that I can know where things are going on so like in here the the places my crosshair should be are like up and around here anywhere that there could be enemies or someone over here but if i know that they're all up here in the beginning i'm aiming up and around this area of, over the bridge this is where i'm looking this is where my focus is so like i'd, I'd be coming through and i'd be checking so as i'm coming through here they might have a widow up here i'm checking up here i'm looking in the doorway i'm looking back here i'm also going to be looking up here so i see all of this as i'm coming through i'm looking at all these spots as i go through to make sure i'm not missing anything 
and uh, even even naturally just checking over here real quick. If I were doing this in real time, like there's a fight going on, um, you will get to a point eventually where you can just know that, okay, I, I, I see the entire team. I can see all six people. They're all over here. I don't need to check over here. Um, if it's only a couple of people, I mean, just be even a quick look. I'd be moving around like this. I'd be just checking, waiting for something to catch my eye if I don't know where something is. Just want to be... Because your eyes will pick up on motion, so even just looking around real fast, you get comfortable doing quick spins uh, to be able to cover everything. So then, like, pushing forward, I know some... Like, if I'm pushing up here, um, I remember you were... Uh, like, when, when you were on Anubis earlier, there was that Sombra. So if you're pushing forward, you're just doing quick checks behind. <clears throat> so your, your attention is still primarily forward, but you're making sure that... Uh, nothing's coming for you so the the biggest way that you can um, supplement your awareness is not just uh, your crosshair placement not just looking around and actually seeing things but uh, recognizing the sound cues so uh, you want to eventually get to the point where <clears throat> Uh, when you when you hear a certain sound, you just have a reflex. Your instinct tells you what to do. And Overwatch has balanced the sounds such that um, the loudest sounds you hear are always enemy sounds. So if, if something sticks out to you, it's probably an enemy. You should turn and look. And even if it's not an enemy, if it's your teammate, it's a good habit to get into to be like, oh, what was that sound real quick and look at it. And you'll naturally, as, as soon as you start focusing on something, you, you will naturally build up the, the the this sort of pattern recognition, the, the this instinct, this tr training um, for uh, what to respond to and how to respond to it. So I, I can only help you with how to respond. I can't help you with the actual responding to it part. That just comes with experience and getting, you know, and practicing it really practicing uh, what you got there um, pra practicing the the learned pattern all right so I'm gonna say we're gonna wrap it up here okay I think I think we got through quite a bit I think so too we got through a lot yeah and uh, best part of this is it was all on uh, stream and will definitely be um, edited into uh, a YouTube video or two. So you have something to review from later if you'd like. Okay. Okay, then. So uh, we'll call it here. Um, big thing to focus on for your games as you practice and uh, work on things yourself. Just uh, keeping an eye on your health bar using your matrix to help you back up, but then also playing as far forward and as aggressively as you can, knowing that, you know, you can, you know, knowing when you need to save yourself that you can save yourself. So you be in there doing as much damage as you can, making sure to use your micro missiles often and um, putting yourself in that effective position to deal damage. Sound good? Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. No, thank you uh, for coming out tonight, and uh, hopefully get to work together again in the future. All right, you take care. Good night. See you. Good night. All right, stream. I don't think I'll be playing any more tonight. I'm pretty tired. Let's see what I got. Hmm. Yeah, we're done. So thanks for watching. Thanks, JMT, for the bits, and I will see you all next time. Peace.